This episode is brought to you by Dick Dyer Mercedes Benz, the first Mercedes Benz in South Carolina. Hey, we're the Cola Guys. I'm David. And I'm George. We have today with us uh, two guests from Foundation Mortgage. Uh, they are just wonderful mortgage brokers. They are a great resource. Uh, we are recording this for Friday, November 3rd, because the following week is Veterans Day. And we want to talk about uh, VA financing for home purchasing, construction loans. And James Fleshman and Avery Blevins are our experts today. Guys, how are y'all doing? Good, doing great. Good, good, good. good. So James, why don't you uh, just really briefly talk to us about Foundation Mortgage, your business a little bit? Sure. Um, well, I, I started Foundation Mortgage uh, actually 21 years ago yesterday. Um, well, time flies. 22 years ago yesterday, 2001. Uh, but I've been doing mortgages since 91. So uh, to people like uh, Avery and George, that's uh, <laughs> in, incomprehensible, but it actually had um, so we've been doing mortgages a long time. We're right here on Divine Street. We're, we're local uh, and we, we love taking care of folks in the Midlands and all over the state of South Carolina. Uh, we're a, a local mortgage uh, broker shop. So we that's all we do in mortgages. And we have a lot of options for folks. Uh, we bring a lot of different tools to bear to help them uh, buy houses, help you guys find them and sell them houses. Um, make the best decision you can for them and their family. Um, everything from conventional loans to FHA to VA, which is what we're going to thankfully talk a lot about today. I'm looking forward to that. Um, but we do it with a, uh, a high level of care. We're right here, uh, like I say, in Columbia and um, just want to bring a high level of service that they may not get other places in a big box store. And that's one of the things Avery does a great job with is, uh, meeting with folks and talking with folks and putting them at ease while they're talking about a lot of big numbers. So uh, something that we do, we do a lot of and VA loans is one of those things. So I appreciate you having us on today. Thank you. And we can't thank y'all enough for joining us, but to start off, could you give us a rundown Avery or James on the difference between a VA loan and a conventional loan and what somebody needs to do in order to qualify for that VA loan? James, you want to take this one? Sure. Uh, well, the, there are some, there are many similarities and there's some differences between the conventional and the VA. Um, conventional one is probably the one that people think about mostly. Um, that's just the more traditional uh, loan uh, it's determined. The rules are determined typically by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, uh, federal agencies that help come up with the rules. Uh, VA is another vehicle. Um, it is a loan type. And, and the Veterans Administration came up with this loan product that helps uh, active duty military personnel, um, uh, reservists, uh, National Guards, uh, Guards Britain, um, also uh, they could be retired. So they don't have to be active at the time they do the loan. But both of those products help people buy a house. Unless they have all the money, they're going to need to borrow some of the money. So one of the great things that VA has, a great benefit that these these veterans or active duty personnel, one of the things that they've earned this benefit is a hundred percent financing. So whereas on a conventional loan, typically you're looking at 3%, 5%, 10, 20% down on a VA, you're able to do it with as, as little as 0% down. So that to me is a big benefit that veterans get um, that they've earned really. I mean um, they've given so much for us and it's a, it's a great tool that, uh, that they've earned and helps them enjoy home ownership. So um, one of the things that's kind of interesting to note, it, it, it doesn't really, uh, may not jump off the page and make sense to you, but the interest rate is actually a little bit lower on a VA and it has been for several years now than it is on a conventional, even if they're putting money down. Uh, VA loans on the back end, if you will, in the servicing time, the time of repayment. And then we're, we're talking about all everything on the front end, but they, they perform very well. So um, they're able to offer loan rates that are even a little bit lower. Um, another difference would be uh, on a conventional loan, you have what is called a private mortgage insurance premium. If you put less than 20% down, you have to pay some percentage um, every month that goes towards private mortgage insurance. You may hear people talk about it, PMI. So um, VA has, has a similar thing, but instead of it being monthly, they call it a VA funding fee. And it is a percentage that is added to the loan amount. So 
of your first time usage uh, for, of the VA loan product, um, you're going to pay 2.15% of that loan in a funding fee, but you don't have to come out of your pocket. You don't bring that money to the table. You can actually finance it in. So if you're doing a hundred percent VA loan, you may very well be borrowing 102.15% of the purchase price. But the beauty is that that, that payment gets spread out. So it's actually lower than it would have been if you were paying PMI. So that's it. That's a key um, difference. Um, also, if you are out of the military, here's a big one. And we see this more and more. If you are out of the military, you're retired um, and you receive any amount of VA disability pay, you're exempt from that VA funding fee. So you could very well get 100 percent financing and have none of that PMI conventional, none of the VA funding fee. You is another benefit that you would have earned uh, due to your service to our country. So. It's a, uh, it's a great product. We love doing them. We do a lot of them and uh, we do them well. And, and we really want to serve those that have served us. So. Those are some really great points. And, you know, in South Carolina, we've got, was it seven active, very large military bases spread across the state. So there's a, you know, I'm sure a huge demand for VA financing. And it, it's funny, a lot of times, the, the active military personnel or the veterans themselves don't know that much about this type of, uh, of, 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 you know, I would say benefit that they have available to them. So for a lot of people, there's, there's one big giant group that most people think that is the only source of VA loans. Veterans is, I believe it's Veterans United, if I'm correct. Is that the only place that, that y'all can go to to get VA funding or are there other banks, institutions that participate in VA loans as well? Well, one of the things I want to say that that is a uh, company, so I don't know that I, I necessarily want to talk specifically about them, but they they have a name that is very similar to Veterans Administration. So. Yeah. Um, they, there is a company out there that has done a tremendous amount of advertising that really makes uh, veterans think that they're linked and they're actually doing business with the VA, even though they're doing business with this other private company that has a similar sounding name. Um, but just so you know, VA does not, the Veterans Administration, the VA loan, the VA does not make those loans. Mortgage companies or brokers like us uh, do the actual loans. So, um, it is uh, guaranteed by the VA, but it is not the loan is not made by the VA. So um, they can come to and they may should come to independent mortgage groups like us that would uh, know the product well and can serve them right here in the local community. Uh, because frequently one of the things that is a big driver in helping people get their offer accepted is having a local lender that can issue a pre-approval letter that is properly vetted that veteran to make sure that they can actually perform and buy that house. That's what the seller wants to know is that on that particular day, the day that we set for closing, that we're going to show up and that money's there and they get their money so they can buy their next house. Sure. And another question to go along with uh, talking about some of the seller's misconceptions maybe about accepting an offer from a VA that's going to be a VA loan. Could you talk about the, how long it takes for a VA loan to be completed and, and how long that average closing time is compared to maybe your normal conventional loan? And if there is a difference, why there is a difference, and if there isn't, uh, why that's a common misconception. James, you go ahead, man. You're on a roll. All right. Well, I don't mind. I don't want to, I don't want to uh, monopolize the whole time, but uh, we, we do VA loans very quickly. Um, they're typically those contracts that we're in 30 days or less on those VA contracts um, as we are on conventional loans. We, we're not necessarily noticing any significant difference between those two in processing times. Um, the, the, the two main things that are outside of our control or any other lender's control is getting that, that appraisal, that VA appraisal, and getting that uh, title work back from the law firm. The rest of it, we're in cooperation with the borrowers, getting the documents in, getting them underwritten, and uh, final approval. Um, the only thing that's a little bit different, the uh, the VA appraisal may, uh, sometimes people think it takes a little bit longer, but it usually comes back in that two weeks or less timeline and is totally fine. And we, we're not missing closings with VA. Um, conventional is running about the same, probably a week or two on a, VA, on a conventional appraisal. So 
that's not a challenge. And, on, and the title insurance is the same either way. So um, I, I feel very comfortable. I'm absolutely 30 days on a, on a VA or less is, is totally, it's totally good. So are there any differences in the, in the, uh, the appraisal outcomes between a conventional loan and a VA loan? Are there stricter requirements for a VA loan in terms of the condition of the house? Um, that the person's buying or, you know, the seller may have to make certain repairs that they might not if it were just a conventional loan? Uh, there can be. We see a lot of hesitancy with um, veterans taking out VA loans as opposed to conventional loans because of this. Um, but in recent times, I don't think we've seen a big difference um, in appraisals coming back. And um, as long as the property condition is, is uh, as long as there's not too much going on, nothing, nothing should be a problem. Yeah. I, I would say if I can just kind of piggyback on what Avery's talking about there, it, it, that's a good point. Um, there sometimes can be, and um, you guys may have seen this in, in the, in this market that maybe a seller or a listing agent, probably a listing agent more than a, than a seller, but a listing agent may advise uh, their client that they may be, they should be hesitant about taking a VA loan. Uh, offer versus another type of loan offer. So um, that that probably is driven by a couple of factors. Uh, one goes to your point, David, that you were asking about the condition of the property. So there's two main things that are different. The condition of the property, um, everybody thinks, well, conventional is just as is. It can be whatever it is. That That's not really true. That's was probably more accurate in the 90s and the, uh, the early 2000s. But now they're going to have uh, condition requirements. And VA, it, that's one of the things you talk about is, hey, it can't have uh, uh, problems, the deferred maintenance, that kind of thing. The biggies that you see they, that they can see is they look for like peeling paint around windows or if it's visible rotten wood around the door casings or something like that. If your house is in good condition and it's, it, it shows well, you're not going to, there shouldn't be anything more that you're going to see on the VA than you would on a conventional. Uh, the other thing that it becomes a sticking point, in, at least in people's perception, is the VA appraisal. Um, so you have condition that may show up on the appraisal, but then you also have the appraisal itself, uh, the determination of value, um, the speed with which it comes back, that kind of thing. So uh, that has probably been largely driven by a couple of uh, folks that have uh, been doing VA appraisals for a long time. And I think that's uh, I think we've overcome that now. I think we are seeing more and more. The VA has opened up the panel, the the appraisal panel, meaning that lenders go in whenever you guys send us the contract. We get the loan in process. We go to this portal. We order the VA appraisal and they assign an appraiser to us. So that panel of appraisers, the, the available VA appraisers has expanded significantly. And there are a lot of really good quality appraisers on there. We are just not seeing uh, challenges on value um, or condition any more on VA than we are on conventional. I would say if anything, I have been surprised over the last several months at what we have been able to get approved on a VA appraisal. Um, some unique properties, some things that had, uh, th you know, uh, amenities that were a little bit different than than other <laughs> properties that we've seen. And I thought, well, shucks, this may be a, this may be a challenge. And we just, and we just went right through. So mm -hmm. VA approved it, appraised it, approved it, and we closed it. So um, I would definitely encourage people not to be off put by that. Yeah. I was going to say, so to any veterans listening, don't let that, um, that make you hesitate to take out a VA loan. Cause it's such a fantastic product with that hundred percent financing and uh, pre-approvals that are from a local lender, such as our, such as ourselves can help uh, overcome some of those hesitancies the listing agent might have. This episode of The Coal Guys is sponsored by Bell Carrington, Price & Greg. Bell Carrington is our choice for the best real estate attorneys in town. They are highly communicative and make sure that the closing process is as smooth as possible. With offices in North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, Georgia, and Alabama, they can handle any of your real estate finance, eminent domain, financial services litigation, and litigation needs. Call their Columbia SC office today at 803-509-5078.